how much exercise is the person actually, the average person? So what's the minimum amount to create that stress that would be beneficial? Okay. Well, there are a lot of studies on exercise, and there's really no doubt that moving is good for you. And there are different levels of, of uh, exercise. I'm exercising right now, not just my mouth, but I have a standing desk, right? The reason I'm jumping around is because I'm always standing. So that's exercise. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, if you want to walk, that's important too. 4,000 steps is considered the minimum. 10,000 is an optimum. Uh, if you go to over that, if you do about 12,000, then there's no additional benefit. Again, uh, not clear if you can overdo it, but 12,000 steps, uh, I wouldn't go beyond that. It doesn't seem to be that great unless you know, you're enjoying your view. Uh, and there then, was a recent paper too, wasn't it? I thought there was, wasn't there a paper from Australia that was talking about how seven to 10 was sort of ideal? They actually just right. published a study a few months ago, didn't they? That's right. Not, yeah, they we'll did. To, yeah, we'll have to cite that. Yeah, and actually that what, what happens is they found that um, exercise can like that can reduce the incidence of age-related diseases by 23%. Mm-hmm. And that includes everything from cancer to heart disease and even uh, dementia. And that's the great thing about exercise. It stimulates this hormesis and it doesn't just affect your heart, but it'll affect all sorts of things, including inflammation um, and depression. These other things are affected too. So please, uh, how I, I would say it is just get off your butt, move, walk and run. And in terms of the running, you don't have to run, first of all. You you can row, you can do any exercise that you like can be a game, uh, but you'd want to lose your breath for about 10 minutes, three times a week. That's considered the minimum. Um, and it induces what's called a state of hypoxia, which is mm-hmm. low oxygen. And when you have low oxygen, a few things happen. Your mitochondria start to produce free radicals and the mitochondrial response is also hormesis. We call it mitohormesis. And then you get activation of AMPK due to low energy uh, uh, and the free radicals. And that leads to this hormesis protective response. You'll have better insulin sensitivity. You'll have lower blood glucose levels, uh, which is very healthy. uh, And you'll start to build up muscle. Now, you also, not just building up muscle, what you also need to do is to have better better blood flow. And hypoxia will induce a, a protein called hypoxia inducible factor number one um bill kalen a colleague of mine at harvard discovered this thing and he won a Nobel prize a few years ago for it mm-hmm. and it's a big deal because hypoxia inducible factor one controls very important pathways related to health and aging uh not least of which is inflammation and so by coming becoming a little bit hypoxic you will turn on this this defense pathway as well and people ask me how do you know when you've done enough hypoxia well, mm-hmm. if you cannot carry out a conversation easily, you know you're in, in a good state. Um, you want your heart rate to be, well, over 100, but you don't want to get you know, above 150, certainly for somebody in their 40s and 50s. Um, and so you can overdo it as well. Um, but, yeah, just 10 minutes is all it takes a few times a week. It's not that hard. Mm-hmm. 